Hi, my name is Patrick Dunn. I'm the Extension Cow-Calf Specialist for Iowa State University in the Iowa Beef Center. Today I'm going to be speaking with you a little bit about utilization of artificial insemination and estrogen synchronization of beef heifers, particularly as it relates to our heifer development mini-series entitled Rebuilding Our Future. Now for the purposes of today's talk, I'm not going to focus on individual protocols or how one protocol compares to the other, but more so from a managerial situation, why we would even want to think about utilizing estrogen synchronization, what the real advantages are of coupling that with artificial insemination in our heifer development programs, and how it can ultimately lead to significant return on investment and increased profitability in our beef enterprise. So there's seven key points here that I want to make today. The first of which is if we utilize estrogen synchronization AI, we should be able to obtain a tighter breeding and calving period. Specifically, when we look at this graph here, we look at our blue bars, that are those are our females that are estrogen synchronized and timed AI, and those in the red bars are those that are bred via natural service. Now utilizing estrogen synchronization AI, we know that we're going to inseminate every single female in the herd during the first week. If those females are of adequate body condition score, they're cycling, we have high quality semen, an adequate technician, we should be able to easily obtain 60% pregnancy rates in those females. Now 60% of 100 is obviously 60% and therefore in an estrogen synchronization program it's possible to obtain as much as 60% pregnancy rate on our females in the first week of the breeding season. However, when we compare that to natural service, even if all of our heifers are managed correctly, developed correctly, and cycling being in the breeding season, because the estrus cycle is 21 days in length, approximately a third of those females are going to come in heat during the first week of the breeding season. If the bull does his job and gets approximately 65% of those females settled, we end up with an ultimate pregnancy rate during that first week in our natural service environment of only about 22%. Now, in terms of dollars and cents, what does that really mean? And when we get more heifers bred during the first week of the breeding season, it's easy to expect that we should have a more uniform calf crop when it comes to weaning, and ultimately those calves will be heavier as we got more of those females bred early in the breeding season the previous year. Now typically we expect that calves should be able to gain about two pounds per day from the time they're born to the time that they are weaned. However, given the fact that we're talking about heifers and during their first lactation, they're likely not going to gain quite as much weight because they haven't met their full genetic potential in terms of milk production, we assume that those calves will gain slightly less, but still on average about a pound and a half a day. Given today's calf prices of about $1.75 a pound, that's an advantage of $2.63 per day for every day older that calf is born to the side of that first parity dam. If we compare calves that are born a week apart, that's a difference in almost $18.50 per animal, which more often than not will pay for the majority of the hormones associated with the synchronization program. Finally, if we compare a calf born in the first day of the calving window versus the 60th day of the calving window, that's a difference in almost $160, so pretty significant figure from that perspective. And the one thing I want to highlight is that does not include improved growth when we use AI sires, as when we're going to use AI sires, we're probably going to use higher accuracy sires that have improved weaning weight, improved average daily gain to weaning, um, improved calving ease, etc that should bring some added value to that calf from a growth perspective up through the weaning period. Next, one thing I think we often overlook, I really want to highlight in this particular talk, is that we get an additional opportunity for heifers to conceive when we have a fixed window breeding season. We typically say that a breeding season for heifers should be about 42 days, that way we promote keeping back more fertile females that breed earlier in the breeding season. <clears throat> but, in a natural service environment, that really only gives us on average about two chances for those females to conceive during a fixed breeding season of 42 days. However, if we complement this with estrogen synchronization AI at the beginning of the breeding season, we know that every single animal should have the opportunity to conceive, they're all going to come into heat or at least ovulate on the very first day of the breeding season, and even if they don't conceive to estrogen synchronization AI, we still have two more opportunities for those females to become pregnant during the natural service portion of the breeding season, which ultimately increases our, purport, or our probability of getting those females pregnant by 50% as we've added another opportunity for them to conceive during the breeding season. Particularly given the costs associated with heifer development in this day and age, that's a very significant figure. We discussed it briefly a few minutes ago, but also 
utilization of ester synchronization AI allows us to introduce new genetics into the herd, some higher accuracy sires, potentially some crossbreeding that may not be possible in a typical natural environment. And then also, with a lot of the protocols that we utilize today using either MGA or melangesterol acetate, if you will, or progesterone-based cedar inserts, we can induce ester cycles in those prepubertal heifers. So particularly if we've been gearing those heifers to be approximately 65% of their body weight being in the breeding season, but if we've had a harsh winter or feed resources weren't quite what we'd like them to be, they came into the breeding season maybe a little bit thinner than we would like, um, so they're on the verge of becoming puberal, but they're not quite there. Some of these protocols that we utilize can get those heifers jump started and get them cycling for the beginning of the breeding season, which is very key in enhancing our pregnancy rate in those females. Um, ensuring a yearling calving interval, and obviously this is the first time those females are going to become pregnant, but there's a lot of data that would suggest that as we get these females pregnant in the first 21 days as yearlings, they tend to stay in the herd longer. They tend to stay towards the front of the herd in terms of um, breeding season year over year and calving season year over year. So anything that we can do to promote getting females bred earlier as heifers will help us keep them in the herd longer and ensuring profitability in the long term. And finally, one thing I want to hit on a little bit, which really probably only works in our larger herds, there is also the opportunity potentially for reducing the number of bulls required during the natural service portion of the breeding season. Um, now I want to be cautious here because ultimately we're probably using yearling bulls to mate with these yearling heifers and so therefore we have to moderate the number of um, females that we expose him to. But when we're using bigger herds, it may be possible to reduce the number of bulls that we have in the herd because we're getting more heifers pregnant during the beginning of that breeding season. So the question often becomes, what estrogen synchronization programs are available? Which ones should I use? And again, I don't want to focus on that too much in this particular talk today because there are numerous, numerous synchronization programs out there that are all effective in their own right as long as you follow them to a T. Um, the biggest thing here is compliance. So whatever program you select, make sure that you can follow it through as compliance is going to give us our best opportunity to get those females pregnant. Um, in terms of the drugs available, I just want to highlight that we've got three classes of hormones, GnRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone, progestins, which is either comes in the form of natural progesterone or synthetic progestins, and prostaglandin F2 alpha. And I think it's really important to understand which class of hormones are associated with which commercial products so that we know that we're giving them in the right order. So our GnRH products that are available include Cisterellin, Bactril, Vertigil, Ovacyst, and Gonabreed. Our progestins, the natural um, progesterone version out there is the Cedar Implants, or the synthetic progestin, which comes in a feed form, is melangestrol acetate, or MGA. And finally, our prostaglandins include Lutilize, Estromate, Prostomate, Estroplan, and Insync. So what ester synchronization programs are available? We have programs for heifers that are simple as being just a prostaglandin shot. Um, some of them are MGA based, some are cedar based, and we can also have the opportunity to select between bringing those females off of heats versus timed AI. And ultimately, um, there are too many programs to go through in a shortened version today, but the one place I want to steer you to is if you have any questions about what programs may work best for you, really urge you to check out the Ester Synchronization Planner which is a joint effort between the ISU Beef Center and the Beef Reproductive Task Force. Um, it's a free download from iowabeefcenter.org. Um, the only thing you have to provide us with is what state you're from, just so we can see gross distribution of where these programs are going. But it's a very easy to use Excel-based program that allows you to go in and compare different ester synchronization programs. So you can look at cost, you can look at uh, products that you would like to utilize, and ultimately develop the program that works best for you with your calendar. The best aspect of this program is, is if you know which day you want to breed those in individuals, it backtracks and gives you a calendar to tell you what to do and when to do it so we can really maximize our opportunity to get those females pregnant off of this ester synchronization program. Um, with that, I'd also like to re highlight the Beef Reproductive Task Force website. There's a slew of information on there relative to ester synchronization and artificial insemination that's very producer friendly, very easy to read. It would definitely complement any breeding program very nicely to give you some added background info and even some insight into which programs may work best in your environment.